Hello everyone and welcome to section 2.2. This is just for honors. This is the intermediate value theorem. So the intermediate value theorem says let a and b be real numbers such that a is less than b. If f is a polynomial function, so let's not overthink that f is a function. There you go. They just call it f, you could call it f of x such that f of a is not equal to f of b. So let's say that a is here, then this point right here would be a comma, and its y value would be f of a. And then let's say that this is b, and this would be the point b comma f of b. The way I've drawn it, a is definitely less than b, which was the first requirement, and the two y values, f of a, is not equal to f of b. So I've met the two requirements. So it says then, on this interval, so we're just going to look at this interval from here to here. f takes on every value between a, f of a and f of b. So if I were to actually say that this is 3, and then this is one, two, three, up to five, and then this is eight. So if f of a is three and f of b is eight, then this function is every number between three and eight. So it's four, it's 6.2, it's seven. What is the purpose of the intermediate value theorem? Well, sometimes, we use it in real life to sit there and say, look, if you were going 30 miles an hour and then you were going 40 miles an hour, I know that at some point you were going 35 miles an hour. It's just a basic concept that if you know two endpoints, you know something about the middle, even if you can't tell me exactly where it happened. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that to approximate a zero. Normally, you would find a zero by factoring or the quadratic formula. But I can't factor this, and it's not quadratic. So since it's not quadratic, I can't use the quadratic formula. Can't use formula. But I can actually get pretty close to the zero. So let's start finding some points. f of zero is equal to one. So a zero, I know it's one. F of one is equal to one minus one plus one, still one. That wasn't very helpful because they're the same height. F of two is eight minus four plus one is five. One, two, three, four, five, so it's way up there. Let's try f of negative one. Negative one would be, let me just erase this, just negative one minus one plus one. Ooh, there we go. Uh, negative one, it's negative one. So I know that this graph comes up and then maybe it goes down a little bit. I'm not really sure. But what I do know is that if it was negative one and then it goes up to positive one, at some point it must have been zero. So even though I can't tell you what the zero is, I know that it has a zero between negative one and one. And that's the answer. It says to approximate the real zeros, there is a zero between x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 0. Because the y value, because f of negative 1 is negative 1 and f of 0 is 1. So see how it goes from a negative to a positive? So there must be a zero in between there. All right, we'll do one more. This is a fifth power. I can't factor it. It's not quadratic. I can't use the formula. 
So I'm literally going to be checking some points. I always do the easy ones. F of zero is to, actually, I'm going to do it differently in case it works better for some people. I'm just going to do it this way. When x is zero, I get two. When x is one, I get negative one plus three minus two plus two is, how this happened last time, two again. At two, I get negative 32 plus 24 minus 4 plus 2. Now, you don't actually have to find the number if the math is too hard. I just look at it and say, well, I know that this is going to come out to be a negative number. So if it comes out that it was a positive number and now it's a negative number, then there's a real zero there. There is a real zero between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. I don't know what the zero is, 1.5, 1.7, I don't really know. But I know it was up at 2, and then at 1 it was up at 2, and then at 2 it was some kind of negative number. It doesn't actually matter what the negative number is. It just matters that this thing, whatever it did, definitely went from positive to negative, and therefore I have found one of the zeros. And that's called the intermediate value theorem. So there's an intermediate value between the two that you find. So if you find a positive and negative, that's how we can find one of the zeros. Okay, this was a super short little video. It's just a little extra for 2.2 that the CP class didn't have to learn. So have a great day.